Okay. This is how a renter brought the car back. Smells like weed. I don't know if they were living in it. I don't know how people get cars this dirty. Same issue in the back. This car is absolutely filthy. And they brought it back at the end of the day. It's absolutely filthy. There is no way that I can rent this out like this. I'm gonna have to, and the car mats are gone. I don't know how people live like this, but this is crazy. And it smells like weed. I don't know if I'm keeping this one. This is clearly has been driven on the highway What the hell? So, this is the second most. Expensive vehicle that I have. And I am. Thinking about getting rid of it. I don't even want to get into this sucker. I'm like, how can you be this nasty? So. How can people live like this? I think that is sand. I think they went to the beach. I think they went to the beach. They were smoking in the car, heavy smoking. And most of the mats are gone. Why would you remove car mats in this? This is something else. This vehicle was perfectly fine when it went out. So, it's due for a service, but here's another issue. This doesn't work anymore. How can you mess this up? This doesn't work anymore. This is stuck. How? 
Okay, boys and girls, we're about to get into a little psychology. You just saw the damage that was done to my BMW X5. We're going to talk about that and a whole lot more. And I'm probably going to drop the poor story as well. Maybe. I don't know. Depends on how I feel. Okay. You saw the damage. I have never seen a car so filthy. I, I was almost expecting to find a tampon up in there. There was sand in the back. And also, maybe that clip wasn't in there, but they had messed up the control, the little control. And this renter had this car for six weeks. And she was one of the people, because like I said, I've got a process. And here's the psychology. Once they stop paying for the vehicle, they don't give a damn. I have never in my life have seen such high disregard for someone else's property. They were smoking in the car, smoking cigarettes and weed. And I'm going to get into the psychology of a person who would do such a thing. When I was growing up, there was two sides of my family. There was the Cosby-like side of the family, and there was the country bumpkin side of the family. And I had this Aunt Inez. And Aunt Inez, she was, uh, like my grandmother, she was a school teacher. She was an educated woman. And she used to make judgments about people that were 100% spot on. And one day we were out and we saw these kids who were rolling around on the ground in the grass and messing up. And they had on their, what we would call their Sunday attire, church clothes they would wear to church. And my Aunt Inez said, they ain't never had shit in their life. And that is the summation that I have for what happened to my BMW X5. These people have never had anything. And the story gets even more saucy. Remember Playa Playa in the Range Rover? The renter of the BMW and Playa Playa were connected. And this car was even filthier than the Range Rover. And what I have a feeling is that they were renting these cars for other people because um, the car, the wheels, I mean, they ran the hell out of this BMW. They ran the hell out of it. And one of the lessons I've learned, because I'll be honest with you, when I saw the condition of the car, it was absolutely filthy. I started to say, fuck renting cars. That's the first thought that popped in my head. First thought that popped in my head because I'm like, you know, I get cars back, the bumpers hanging off. I get cars back, there's a hole in the mirror, there's a dent, there's, and I'm just sitting here and I have to realize the population that I'm dealing with is a population that has never had shit in life. I, I meet these people and essentially what I'm gonna start doing is getting there way before, I'm not gonna get out because essentially I got out of the Porsche when I rented the BMW to this chick. And let's talk about this chick. I'm learning that when like the chick essentially had the BMW towed because apparently their neighbors called and had the vehicle towed. That should have told me something. I should have got my car back right then and there. That's when I should have got my car back. Just like when player player lost the key. I should have got my car back, right? Because they're showing you who they are. Who gets their car towed? Someone that isn't obeying the rules. That's how she got the car towed. Now the car from a mechanical standpoint, there, there's damage and it is, I mean, I've never seen a car this filthy. 
And also, the car was returned to me on fumes. Literally, I had two miles from where I parked my cars to go get gas and I almost to fill it up was almost a hundred bucks was almost a hundred bucks and this is someone once again like player player she like you threatening to call the police on me I said I'm not threatening if my car isn't back at 4 p.m. I will be calling the police and player player the coward that he is he brought back the car and he parked it on the other side of the business building because when I she sent me some kind of service update where the car was supposed to be getting the oil change the car did not get an oil change and I saw player player's name and I was like what the hell what the hell and player player brought the car back and I know how he gets down he's a coward he's not a man he's a coward and like I, 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 I was like, OK, and she said her boyfriend, her boyfriend was supposed to bring in the car back. So I drove around the building and I found the BMW on the other side of the building. And this is our people. I've not had anyone white do any of this. I have not had anyone Asian do this. I've not had anyone Puerto Rican or Spanish do this stuff. These are black people. And also, in my earlier video, someone was like, you stay in your self-reflection and bragging. Graham Stephan can talk about owning multiple houses, being a millionaire, and getting all this money from YouTube, and no one says he's bragging. But I, a successful black man, just say, this is what I'm doing and this was what I have. In the poverty mindset, the people who are like these people who rented my cars and had no disregard for them, you people are in the comment sections because you're the same people. And, you know, like I said, I had my moment where it's like, fuck this. I'm like, because essentially we're running like, I'm going to say 60, 65% of higher car renters are good and 35% are like this person. And uh, I'm going to send this video to hire car because how can you be that filthy? I've never seen such filth. I've just never encountered such filth. And essentially tomorrow is supposed to rain, which means that all of the car washes that do details, they may be closed because typically when it rains, they, they, they shut down. So, and also the navigation, how do you mess that up? You press buttons, you turn, how do you mess that up? The, 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 it's stuck on the navigation. And I got to take that somewhere. And essentially, this is where I'm at with a uh, higher car. Am I going to stop? No. I've dealt with all of this crap, you know. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach higher car differently. And one of the things that I have begun to understand is putting super nice cars on hire car is a recipe for disaster. Because they jacked up my BMW X5 because they never had shit in their life. Like, I've had many luxury cars. And typically when I sell them, they're in really good condition because I take care of my stuff. And when you're dealing with the psychology, play a player, of people who never had anything, never had anything. And like I said, lessons are to be learned here because once again, if someone gets my car towed and they call me, I'm going to get my car. I'm just like, give me the key. I'm taking the car and I'm banning them as a renter. Someone loses a key. You're banned as a renter because these are signs that this person is a careless person. They're not careful. They're not dutiful. They don't um, take care of people's stuff. They don't take care of their own stuff because they ain't never had stuff. 
They ain't never had anything. And going forward, because my, my path was to buy cheaper cars to put on a higher car. And I'm 100% committed to that because I got some situations brewing because like I said, I've gotten really good at getting the car back because when, when I, I sent her the demand letter and then I sent her a text of the letter and that's when she was like, you're threatening me. I'm like, I'm not threatening you. If my car is not back at 4 p.m., I'm gonna call the police on you and a warrant for your arrest will be out there. You want that heat? I don't care, you don't care, I don't care. At four o'clock, my car was back. And this reminds me of a story from Tony Robbins. And it was about this preacher and this gang member. And the preacher was trying to get people to do certain things. And the gang member said, that ain't gonna work, Poppy. That ain't gonna work. You gotta talk to him like this. And essentially, I'm gonna have to start being an asshole to these people. Because essentially, I asked her to bring the car back. I asked her to bring the car back. She ignored me. Until we got around to bringing the police into the picture and I got my car back. And I got it back in terrible condition. And I'm just sitting here looking at the kind of people. Once again, there are a lot of good people on hire car. There's a lot of good people. They're trying to do some work, but also there were some signs because she got a little sassy with me when I was like, she was late and she caught up, then she got late again. And one of the things I'm doing, like I have this situation, the guy who rented the car and he was two days late and he caught up, now he's two days late again. Instant demand letter, bring my shit back because this is gonna to continue to be a problem. If they're late shortly after renting the car, they're gonna to continue to be late. You're gonna to continue to have to message them. You're gonna to have to continue. It's annoying, it's, it's strictly annoying. So I'm gonna have that car back by um, Friday. Today is Tuesday. I may have that car back by Thursday because he's gonna get the letter and I'm gonna put a lot of pressure on him because essentially, once again, there's some good people on hire car. There's some really good people on hire car, right? And essentially, my goal is to get my asset back and rent to these people. And if you show me, like, seriously, one day late, I'm gonna, I'm, I might get to the point where you're one day late, I may ask you to bring the car back. Typically, one day, a lot of people get one day late or get a few hours late and they catch up, no problem. And I've not had issues with that. But one of the things that will happen is if you're not on these people, once again, I'm gonna to have to bring out my inner asshole. And I'm gonna to have to start talking rough and rugged to these people because essentially, I have a situation where I feel this girl's gonna get arrested because she don't think nothing's gonna to happen to her. And tomorrow, we go ahead and get my first GPS kill switch. I think I'm gonna put it in the BMW and then I'm going to start putting these in there because I'm dealing with a desperate population. Look at who cannot afford to buy a car. Look at who I'm dealing with. So I'm already dealing with people that already have strikes against them. And I'm like, I am so blown away at the condition of this car. They smoked weed in it. They smoked cigarettes. There was ashes. There was sand. I am just sitting here like, if I rented that out and it came back like that, I would want to put my hands on somebody. So even though I'm upset and I'm literally blown away, I'm also, there's a certain part of me that's detached because um, I don't have the title for the BMW yet. If I had the title, I probably would get rid of it once I cleaned it up because I can't take that nowhere and try to trade it in like that, <laughs> you know? Um, so once I get that cleaned up, 
you know, got a tank of gas, try to figure out what's going on with the navigation. That is just crazy to me. That is just crazy what they did. I mean, once again, these are black people. And one of the things that I'm beginning to understand, because I'm beginning to see signs, little signs that or telltale signs that there will be trouble later on. Like this chick, she kinda got smart with me when she was behind. And that also, here's the thing. Like when I make a mistake, I apologize because I know I'm wrong, I, I'm, my, my bad, I'm sorry. But when you in the wrong and you gonna get flippant, that is a sign of your character. And this chick has poor character, hence why she's hooked up with player player. And part of me want to put her name and ID out here for public exposure. And I'm just sitting there like, I don't know the legal ramifications of that because this is the way that I got the vehicle back from her. And I'm just sitting there like, because this is absolutely disgusting. It is like, I didn't want to get in the car to go get gas, but when I saw that my range was two miles, I was like, I need to get some gas for this. And when I got to the gas station, I was across the street from the gas station, the range went from two miles to dash. And literally I was riding on fumes so the lack of consideration, the lack of care, the lack of like everyone before her, they rented it out. They brought it back clean. They brought it back with a tank of gas. But this situation is taught me a lesson because essentially going forward, I'm going to buy good, dependable cars, but they're going to be much older and I am slowly going to start moving away from like the BMW X5s. I will never, never put like a 2013. You just ask it for trouble because someone who has the thirst will see that car and they're like, I can't buy it, but I can rent it and they will dog it out. I have just never seen such careless disregard for someone else's property. It is literally blowing my mind. I cannot believe that this is how this vehicle was returned to me. I mean, you know, when you go on a road trip and how you have all the bugs and stuff on the bumper, they went on a road trip. They probably went out of state. They were driving this car all over creation. And one of the reasons, like, I hope I get the title tomorrow because I get the title, I'm trading out of that because it's a nice vehicle, but in its present condition, I can't rent it on Toro because the GPS thing is messed up. And, you know, because essentially uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to start having the kill switches put in. And I'm not going to put a kill switch in this because as soon as I get the title, as soon as I get things sorted out, it's gone. The Porsche is gone. The BMW is going to disappear because what happened today will happen again in the future because of the demographic that I'm running to. Like, I've never had a Camry return to me like that. I had a camera with the bumper hanging off, but I am literally blown away. To me, these people are animals. They're not humans, they're animals. Because how can you as a person drive in such filth? I mean, remember when I was dating, and this is something that we used to do. It's like you go over to a girl's house. One of the first things you would do is go check out her bathroom and see if her bathroom was clean because that told you a lot about her. If her bathroom was messy, there was a ring around the tub, there was dishes, there was 
This was someone that you were not going to have as a long-term partner because they were dirty, nasty, and messy, right? And same thing. For someone to actually drive a vehicle like that on a daily basis, being that nasty, being that nasty, you saw the video, and you get in that day and day with it being absolutely filthy. You are an animal. You're not a person. You are an animal. Animals eat their own shit. Animals be licking each other's ass. You are an animal. And I'm just sitting there like, and you know, I have to mentally adjust because this is what I'm going to be dealing with. I don't think that this is going to be, I don't think this is a one-time incident. This is going to happen in the future. And I have to let myself like, ask myself, do you want to be dealing with this BS in the future? Because right now, this is the great reset. Uh, I'm resetting. I'm getting rid of cars. I'm trading out of cars. I'm, 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 I'm resetting the business. I'm getting the GPS kill switches. If you're renting a hire car, you're gonna need a GPS kill switch, mandatory. It's gonna be mandatory. And essentially what's gonna happen is, once I get these kill switches, cause it's gonna probably take me about two months to get them all installed, cause I got 20 of them. First day, you're late, cut that car off. Cut it off and go get it. Because I am finding out that I have to go back to my inner asshole. I remember I bought this unit and this, this is something that could happen. Like you could buy a unit and then the people who own the unit will come in and pay after you bought it. But I was such a quick mover. I would buy a unit and get those suckers cleaned out quick. And I got called that, hey, they want to come get their stuff back and we'll give you your money back and blah, blah, blah. And I actually did it and it was one of the worst experiences in my life. They were in their warehouse trying to claim stuff that I know for a fact didn't come out that unit. They was like, well, this is our bed. I was like, no, that's not your bed. I bought that bed two weeks ago. That came from another unit. All your stuff is right here. And once again, desperate people will do desperate things. And, you know, I, I'm going to be honest. I had a moment. When I first saw that vehicle, I was absolutely blown away that someone could actually be driving something in that condition. And then the damage, like the, the wheel rash, I think one of the tires has been changed. There's um, one of the tow cover hooks is missing. But that's as far as it, you know, the damage, there's no clear, you know, there's no bumper hanging off and then like that. But, you know, it will look better once I get it washed and cleaned up and then try to figure out how to unfreeze the GPS because I don't know how you mess that up. I mean, unless they had Bebe's kids, I don't know. But I'm learning because essentially what may happen is I may not have anything greater than a 2010 or 11 on the platform. I may not have one um, because what I'm seeing is when you give people cheap access to nice things, they, they're going to mess it up. They're going to mess it up. You remember how your grandmother and grandfather was able to keep some furniture for 40 years and it still looked brand new? That's a sign of character. And right now, and when I saw Player Player's name, I was like, oh hell. How, why can't I get away from these people? And she and Player Player, and once again, once I'm finished with them, they will never be able to rent another car on Hire Car ever again. Never. Never. Because I'm going to write in and I'm going to actually send this video to my. Uh, representative and I'm like you need to show this because this is what some of your clients are doing and these people and I'm gonna name them 
And it's like they should never be able to rent another car from another um, owner of hire car because this is what they're going to do. Two people of similar personality and my car comes back trashed. And once again, it comes back in the middle of the day. They, and th this is another thing. When you ask them what time, they never give you a time. And this is a very important lesson. People who cannot honor time will not honor you. It's like, I'll get around to it. There's no sense of urgency. So what if I'm late? So I'm not paying you. I'll get it to you whenever. These people will never, ever be successful. They will never, ever be successful because there's no sense of urgency. There's no sense of purpose. And I am seeing, because like I said, I've been doing this two, two months, going on nine weeks, and I'm learning a lot because essentially I am managing the late payment because essentially I don't let it get as far as it got. Because once again, this one dude, he's two days late, and I sent a demand letter today. And he's gonna be bringing that sucker back. Because I'm like, I'm not gonna keep saying, hey, you need to pay, you need to pay, you need to pay. I'm not gonna keep chasing after rent. Because what I am finding out is these people are accustomed to being spoken to that way. Because going back to that story where the pastor was trying to get people to do stuff and the gang member is like, no, no, you got to do it like this. You got to talk to these people rough and reckless. I am learning. I am learning. And part of me want to call up this bitch and cuss her out. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm going to move on and I'm going to um, keep doing what I'm doing. But I'm here to tell you, there is a certain population on the hire car that is trash. Most of the people, I would say 65, maybe 70 percent, they're good, decent people. But there is a very high percentage of bogues, a very high percentage of people who will mess up your stuff. This BMW, before she rented it, was in mint condition. Now, because of the wheel rash and some of the damage, I'm going to say once it's cleaned up, it's not going to look so rough. And once I get the cigarette ashes and stuff out and once I get the navigation thing, I, I you know, and it needs an oil change. And I'm, I'm just sitting here. And this is one of the reasons that you need a GPS kill switch, because the longer they have your car and they're not paying for it, the more they're going to fuck it up. That's gospel because I was on her to the point where she was like, you threatening me. I'm like, I'm not threatening you. Four o'clock today, the police will be called. And at four o'clock today, I called the police and my vehicle got back. So I got to call them and pull the dogs off. I mean, this, this is this is crazy because you're dealing with adults. I was talking to the cop. And that's like, they know what they're doing and they don't think they're going to get in trouble. And once I, I'm, I'm counting on this chick getting arrested, I'm counting on this chick getting arrested because I'm going to have a story to tell. Because essentially when people rent the car, I'm going to be like, look, this is the deal. You rent this car, you do this, you break the windshield, you got to pay for it. You flatten the tires, you got to pay for it. You lose the key, you got to pay for it. Also, $700 key, you know, hire cars uh, replacement. They're only going to give me $250 out of the $700. $250. So I had a $1,400 loss, and they're going to give me $250 plus the gas. And essentially, these people should not ever be on the platform. They are trash. They are trash, and I'm going to let my representative know this and to make sure that they're permanently banned so they don't do this to someone else because we're dealing with grown people who act like bad children. So I'm not going to do the poor story because essentially I want to do the poor story a certain way, but I, that will be coming sometime this week. But yeah. 
I, I just can't believe that adults behave like this in the psychology I'm dealing with the bottom segment of society in the bottom segment of society will never have any wealth this is the permanent underclass they will be permanent and like I said when I hire staff I'm gonna train them to be like speak to them reckless do not be kind do not be respectful because essentially they will not respond to that and essentially um, she had the car she got late and essentially I sent the demand letter this weekend and actually her address she moved so the demand letter and then the cop told me send her a text of it and that would be good enough and I sent her that text and she's been ignoring my communications but I sent her that text and she's like now you're threatening me and I'm like I ain't no threat my car is not back at 4 p.m. today I promise you I will be calling the cops so you know it, it, it's it's wild that I've been doing this nine weeks and the cop it was the same cop female cop who came for player player and she's like it's you again I was like it's you again and um, I don't know I have a feeling we're gonna end up dating I don't know why but um, you know, she took it and then she had a lot of questions for me because she's like, how many cars do you have and all this other stuff? And it, it, it got real interesting. But one of the things that you guys have got to understand, I am seeing the worst of the car rental business. This is the absolute worst. And I'm going to tell you, it's good for me. I know you're going like, what? This is good because, see, after all of this stuff, there's nothing but upside because I'm in the pits of hell. I'm just sitting here like, I cannot believe that all this stuff keeps happening. And essentially, I'm going through the gauntlet. And the gauntlet is a period of your business where everything that can go wrong, things go wrong, things are bad. It's just you have stressful nights. You have long days. I'm going through the gauntlet right now, and I've gone through it before. And I went through it with YouTube. I went through the gauntlet with YouTube. There was one point I was gonna quit YouTube. So I know that this is a season. It ain't gonna last forever. And each incident that happens, I get smarter and smarter and smarter. But yeah, this is what black people and I know a lot of people get mad. It's like, man, you be talking down about black folks. It ain't white folks who are doing this. All my white renters have brought the cars back. My Asian renters, there's been two, not a problem. And I'm gonna even say it. All of my gay renters have been 100% legit. All my gay renters have been on point. One dude, he washed the car, brought it back. I'm just sitting there like, so how you act is how you'll be treated. And going forward, I'm about to start ratcheting it up because once again, I've been doing this two months and just kind of like, I went through the gauntlet in the storage auction business. And I remember a day where I had bought a unit that was full of trash and I came home and I was feeling exactly like I feel right now. I was just like, I was feeling defeated. I was feeling like it's it worth it. And I was at even though I'm not at the apex of giving up because I'm much stronger than I used to be back then, but I almost gave it up. I almost gave up YouTube. I almost gave up the storage auction business. And both of those businesses became extremely lucrative once I learned the business. See, this is the state I'm in. And this is the state that so many of you don't want to go through. This hard uh, period of learning the business because I'm learning like when someone is two days late they rent a car and they're instantly two days late get your car back because this this behavior ain't going to change they're going to keep doing it and what's going to happen is and i've seen it it's happened to me two times two days turn into four days four days turn into six days because if you're not on them they're going to be like oh and they're, they're driving every day they're driving every day they're depreciating your asset every day and they're not paying you and they consciously know they're not paying you. And essentially, they're living in a state of suspended fear because one day it's going to get bad 
and like this chick when i when i when i said like i'm calling the police and essentially she actually said something about you gave my number and call my threatening my boyfriend and i'm like i don't even know what you're talking about i've not done that i don't even know what you're talking about and then when i saw play a player's name i was like oh god because he didn't want to bring the car back and she didn't want to bring the car back and part of this is because when i rented the car to her she saw me get out that porsche and i went at the range rover to the dude he saw me get out that porsche and what i'm going to start doing is being in the car i'm going to be in the rental car they're not going to see me get out the porsche i'm actually going to park the porsche away from the rental cars because when they see that i'm doing well they feel that that is a license to take advantage because i'm not going to be hurt and it's a fucked up way of thinking that oh he good he got it he got it so i can take advantage but once again this speaks to character and these people have no character they have no character whatsoever none so once again i want you guys to understand this is real business and i know i've talked about certain youtubers that glorify like you can do this to make all this money and they don't talk about the bad stuff this is what i'm talking about the stuff they don't talk about because uh once again car bnb was the only youtuber to go into depth and talk about the bad side of renting cars and from what i hear he's giving it up i don't know i don't know if that's true or not if someone knows who he is and they know him reach out and talk to him because um i see so much upside but right now we're going through the gauntlet we're going because the cop she was just like you know and she saw that i had put in another stolen for the porsche the stolen vehicle report she saw that in there and i was like yeah they know that i got that back and all this other stuff and um it's the gauntlet baby it's the gauntlet and this is where real hustlers real entrepreneurs start to shine because it's easy to make money when everything's going well what are you gonna do when stuff is fucked up that's the sign of your future success and like i said when i saw that car and i could not believe it i just was like fuck this car business that's the first thing that popped in my head because i am not used to dealing with the bottom segment of society i'm not it's been a long time it's been 14 years since i've had to deal with that segment of society but there's money here and i'm going to stick with it and i'm just going to continue to solve problems because there's a lot of problems so tomorrow we get our first gps tracker installed i'm going to put it in the bmw and then um i'm not going to put it in the x5 because the x5 once i get the title that bad boy's gone these cars just draw the wrong type of people to my rental car business. I don't have these issues with the Camrys. I didn't have these issues with the Acuras. And yeah, so that's all I got for you guys. This is the rental car business, real, unfiltered and uncut. <laughs> so I will see you guys in the next one.